How's it going everyone? It's Charlie and welcome back to the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. For your Brentford match review, finished 5-2 to the home side. That wasn't a great watch at all. Um, yeah. Just before we get into it properly, smash that like button. Please subscribe and support the channel. Share all of your thoughts and opinions and your frustrations in the comment section down below. There's going to be some truths told on this video. Um, probably things that people might not agree with. Yes, it's in the moment. The game's literally just finished as I am recording this. I'm in my living room um, for this one. And yeah, where do I start? Um, look, the first half, I, I tweeted it out at half time. I did think we were the better team. We are losing 2-1 at the break, but I did feel that in the first half, we controlled large parts of that first half. And I stand by that, we did. We played really well. Defensively, we looked a bit shaky, as we always do, but I thought offensively, out wide, in the middle, I thought we were just controlling it. The first goal from them is a penalty, which, again... Some Leeds fans might actually think it, it is a penalty. I don't. Not for one minute. The amount of angles that it showed on there, it, it, it isn't a penalty. It isn't an handball, first of all, because that's the first thing that they checked for. And then, obviously, Sinistera brings down Ivan Tony, which obviously there's contact there. I'm not saying there isn't. But he wins the ball for me. The angle where it, where Tony and Sinistera are facing the, the camera, you see Sinny's leg wrap round him and he wins the ball, in my opinion, anyway. It, it's clear as day that his foot touches the ball and he wins the ball back. Never a penalty for me, but obviously it gets given and Ivan Tony scores. The second one is a wonderful free kick from him. Really well struck free kick. But they should have never had that free kick anyway. It was a free kick, I mean, from our point of view. Robin Cock diving in on the edge of the box. I saw some Leeds fans tweet out saying that it isn't a free kick. It is. Right? It is a free kick. And there's no reason why he should have given it anyway. It was covered. Yeah, they may have played it out wide and they could have cut it across, but anything could have happened there. You know, you were giving so many free kicks away. Cheap free kicks in very dangerous areas. And they've got so much aerial ability. They've got good strikers of the ball, clearly. You know, Ivan Tony. And we paid the price. Paid the price. We were shocking at the back all game. Um, Diego Irente. I mean, I'll, I will be getting on to Irente in, in a little bit. Trust me, I've got some things to say about that man. Um... His passing in the first half was shocking. Cock didn't look as cool, calm and collected as he has been so far this season, in my opinion. Strauch was all right at left-back. I will give him that. And Cody Drame just looked like a fish out of water. He just... No, no confidence. He was giving the ball away sometimes as well. That might be being harsh. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going off what I see. For me, I thought Ailing, when he come on in the second half, did quite well. I would have started with Luke. Yes, he's coming back from injury, but if he's on the bench, he's clearly fit enough to play. Even if he'd have started the game and maybe had to come off, I think if he would have started the game with Luke Ailing on the right-hand side, it could have been a bit different. Obviously, then Leeds pull a goal back just before the break um, to make it more interesting. Louis Sinistera, God stuttered a little bit there. I think it's because I'm on a bit of a rant. Um, yeah, Sinistera scores an unbelievable goal. Really good finish outside of the box. He's scored three goals for us so far, and they've all been from outside of the box. He took his finish well, um, and it was poised for the second half. Leeds had the momentum. I tweeted it out at half-time. Tweeted it out. Carry the momentum in to the second half, and let's get at these. 
let's get at them. Because in open play, they weren't great, in my opinion, in that first half. They weren't. They scored a dodgy penalty call and a goal that was our own wrongdoing in giving a cheap free kick away in a very, very dangerous area. But anyway, half time comes, we bring Patrick Bamford on, which I think was the right change. However, however, he brings Jack Harrison off, who for me was one of our better players in the first half. I know I'm not a coach. I'm just a fan watching. But I'm seeing what Marsh is seeing. We're all seeing what Jesse Marsh is seeing. For me, bring Bamford on for Gellart, because Gellart, he had little spells where, yeah, he was, you know, quick turn of pace, but he didn't really do anything for me. Didn't do anything. And for me, that was the change to make. I was happy that Bamford came on, but Gellart should have been the one to come off. And then, I'm not sure if this was before or, or after they scored their third goal, but Jesse Marsh gets a red card. And for me, he was right to moan at that penalty call. He tugs on Somerville's shirt. Must have been after, actually, yeah. After their third goal. He tugs on Somerville's shirt in the build-up as he's running. And then he clearly brings him down in the box. VAR had a look, but they decided against it. VAR is a shambles. An absolute shambles. That should have been a penalty. I'm not saying it would have changed the game. We might not have even scored it. But it was a penalty. A blatant penalty. And Marsh was right to be annoyed and right to moan. Obviously, he'd been out of his technical area quite a lot during the game, which I think contributed to the red card. I think if that had just been his first time moaning, he might have just got a booking. Uh, but I think all game he'd kind of been in the fourth officials here, which is why that accumulated up to a, a red card. Obviously, it's up to Leeds whether they choose to appeal that. If they don't, then he won't be on the touchline against Nottingham Forest. <laughs> Anyway, but obviously, well, let's talk about the third goal then, because that's where it kind of started to get even worse at the back. <sighs> ball over the top, or through th ball, was it? I can't even remember, if I'm honest. It's all a bit of a blur. All I remember is Melier coming out, which I think was right, given the weight of the ball through. I think Melier was right to make an attempt to come off his line and try to prevent that. But his kick out... He gets there, but his his connection with it puts it into the path. I don't know if it was Tony that actually it goes straight to, or if he, or if it got laid off to him. But the coolness, the calmness, the composure to dink that over and make it three one in his hat trick. Fair play to him. I do have one critic, well, a, f a few criticisms, but the main one for me, which people might not agree with, but it's just a personal thing that I noticed. I don't think Robin Cock makes that much of an effort to try and prevent that from going in. I'm not saying that he would have prevented it, but he didn't even make the effort to try and clear that off of his line. I'm not blaming him for the all-round move or anything. I just think he could have made more of an effort to clear that off. But he makes it 3-1. Um, and at that point, I'm thinking, if it stays like this, it stays like this. We've played well for the majority. Just a few... Chaotic moments at the back. And then Bamford has a chance. Now, it comes off his heel. It comes off his heel. If he gets a, even a half-decent connection on that, it's it's 3-2. And we had one get to get back in it at that point if it was 3-2 then. And who knows... What could have happened? I'm not saying it would have changed the outcome. We probably would have still lost the game. But, you know, who knows if Bamford scores that. And then Mark Rocker on the follow-up after that miss from Bamford should have scored as well. Decent save from Raya. But anyway, Leeds actually go and score pretty much almost about a minute or two after that through Mark Rocker, who scores his first Leeds United goal. Small positive to take as well. 
Um, I actually checked my phone and obviously the stream that I was watching it on was obviously, what, maybe 30 seconds behind. I saw Phil Hay tweet out that we'd scored before I even saw it go in. But, and at that point you're thinking, right, we've got 11 minutes left. It's 3-2. Push for a point. Let's get a point out of this. The momentum, again, I talk about that word a lot, but the momentum, we were playing well. Going forward, we looked better than them going forward. We did. And then they score the fourth goal, literally straight away. 4-2, four, four which in normal play, when you give the offside, I thought, yeah, it's offside, let's move on. Boom, 3-2, let's move on. And then the longer it kept getting delayed, I was thinking, what are, the, what are they on about? And then obviously you see the replay and it's the final touch off of Robin Cock. And again, it's just that unluckiness at the back that, you know, just it's just unfortunate that it comes off him because if it comes off Tony, then it's offside and it it's it still stays free too. A decent finish from Mbuemo. And it's 4-2. At that point, you're thinking, right, keep it at this. We've played well. Unfortunate scoreline. Keep it tight at the back. And then Diego Llorente steps up. Right. Can we just, there's a question needs to be asked now. Why does Diego Llorente keep getting picked in this team? The first few games of the season, it's injuries, I understand. Cooper's in, Cooper's up, Cooper is on the bench. Bring Cooper on. Bring him on. Earlier, bring him on earlier. To help just stabilise it and have a bit of leadership at the back. Composed head. Or even Helder, put Helder at centre back. Anybody, play anybody. I'd rather Luke Ayling play there than Yorente. He is shocking. He is really, really bad. That he, he should be ashamed of himself for that fifth goal. Dithering and dithering and dithering on the ball, not knowing where to play it to. Too many touches. You cannot afford to take too many touches at the back in the Premier League, whoever you're playing against, whether it's Brentford, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, whoever. Speaking of Chelsea, that game feels like ages ago. Because since then, we've played crap against Brighton. But I can kind of excuse that because Brighton are actually are a decent team. Everton game was 50-50. We got a point. We got what we deserved there. Today, I was thinking, Brentford, yeah, decent team, but they've started off a bit hit and miss. I thought we could, I know I said 2-1 leads in my preview, which sounds delusional now. But deep down, I thought, we can at least get a point here. Let's get a point, move on. We've got Nottingham Forest next, which is very winnable at home. Even after this, I still am confident going into the Nottingham Forest game. I believe they drew 2-2 with Bournemouth, having been 2-0 up against Bournemouth at home. So, you know... Obviously, they've signed a lot of players. They've still got to gel. So, you know, we can still be confident going into this game. But for me, if Cooper's fit and if Firpo isn't, strike remains at left back and it's Cooper and Cock at the back. Cock didn't have a great game today, albeit, but that's probably his worst performance of the season. Diego Llorente has been consistently poor now, probably since Brighton. Brighton, yeah, the last three games has been shocking. Drop him. Get him dropped. Get, please get him dropped. I would have rather have sold Urente and kept Charlie Cresswell at the club. Genuinely. Poor last season. And overall, he's been poor this season. I think the first few games, I think because of how well we did, it kind of papered over the cracks a bit. But Urente needs to book his ideas up or he needs dropping. He needs dropping. Like, immediately. Should be absolutely ashamed of himself for that fifth goal. It's shocking. Really bad. 4-2 isn't a great scoreline. Like saying it, 4-2, yeah. It's it's bad, but it's like, fair, fair enough, it's not our day. 5-2 is borderline embarrassing. Considering how well we played in the first half and how kind of 50-50 in open play it was. Brentford just looked really good 
on the counter attack. It was clear what their game plan was. Low blocks, sitting deep, and catches on the counter. And boy, did they catch us on the counter! Obviously, the, the fifth goal. Yeah, he slots it home, and it it is what it is. Just really bad, really bad at the back. I think going forward, we are very much improved from the majority of last season. But at the back, it's still the same for me. People weren't really calling for any defenders to come in. We were linked with John Egan towards the end of the window. Can maybe understand why now. Maybe in January we can look at maybe bringing some defensive options in. Who knows? Or basically just drop the players who are playing bad at the back, i.e. Diego Llorente. And we might start to see a little bit of, you know, consistency, maybe. But yeah, I'm not happy, um, as you can tell. Uh, I don't think any of us are. I'm just glad now that I can take a few days off. I can, you know, I've now got a week off work. It's my birthday on Tuesday, so I'm going to just try and enjoy the next few days. I go to Liverpool on Monday for two days with the missus. Um, just going to enjoy that, not stress about Leeds United. Maybe come off social media for a few days and just... Just try and relax because that was not good. And I'm actually glad that Leeds don't play next Saturday or Sunday and it's actually Monday because we've got a while to get over it. We've got longer in training to put those defensive insecurities behind us. And hopefully we're a lot stronger at the back against Nottingham Forest. Um, but yeah, that has been your post-match video for Brentford 5, Leeds United 2. That sounds so annoying to say, that scoreline. Make sure you hit the like button. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel as well. Share all of your thoughts and opinions and your frustrations in the comment section down below. And I'll see you in my next upload. See ya.